Okay, I think it's time to move on, start a new chapter, and finally talk about composure. And yeah, I say finally because truthfully, it's a little bit overdue. But yeah, it's just how it goes. There's a lot to cover here. All right, so what is composure? Well, first, for this video, why don't you work along with me? Visit getcomposure.org. And yeah, as you see here on the tin, Composer is a dependency manager for PHP. So it offers us a way to install PHP packages. But now you're probably like, well, great. I don't know what Composer is. And now I don't know what a dependency manager is. And I don't know what a package is. All right, well, a package is nothing more than code, just a collection of files that you then make available to anyone in the world. All right, but how does anyone in the world install your package? Well, they're going to use a dependency manager like Composer. So let me give you some ideas. As you can imagine, uh, when you build your own projects, you're not going to code every single line by hand like we've done in this series. There's really no point. Uh, you, know the, you know the phrase, don't reinvent the wheel? Well, so often the same is true for code. Why spend hours and hours and hours and hours building something that has already been built many years ago and has been iterated upon, uh, again, for months or for years. There's no point. It's a waste of your time. All right, so let's say you want to, I don't know, uh, interact with Amazon S3 storage. Well, again, you could interact with their API yourself, or it looks like we have an SDK that we could pull in. If we use a framework like Laravel, it looks like we have a service provider to assist with that. Great. Uh, maybe you want to test your code. We haven't talked about that much, uh, but we will get into it very soon. And yeah, it looks like there are some packages, one called Mockery, one called PHP Unit, one called Pest PHP that I will introduce you to. Uh, maybe you want to make some kind of application on the command line. So where the, where the command line, as you see here, is your interface rather than a browser. All right, well, that's called the console. All right, well, it looks like Symfony offers a console component that we can pull in. And then even further, if we want to style it to make it look very pretty, we can pull in a tool called Termwind. All right, so you get the general idea. Whatever you need to do, there is probably a package that is available to you. Okay, rhyme intended. All right, so let's pull this in together. And yeah, work along with me. Getcomposer.org, we will hit download. And yeah, you can see at the time of this recording, we're using 2.5.5. And all we're going to do is copy all of this. And now in my case, I already have Composer installed, but there's no harm in doing it again. All right, so while that's doing its thing, yeah, if you want, you can quickly uh, peruse this page here. And yeah, here, this is probably the most interesting part. Most likely, you will want to put Composer.far, and that is available here. All right, we will want to put that in a directory that is part of our path so that we can simply call Composer from anywhere in our application. Okay, so you can see they are moving Composer.far into our user local bin directory. Okay, so let's just copy that and do the exact same thing. All right, so I will paste that in, move it into my path, and yeah, hopefully we're all set to go. So we can test this by closing the tab, opening a new tab with Command-T, at least for me. And if I run Composer, there we go. We're up and running. Okay, so now I want to, well, before we pull in a package, why don't we create a basic composer.json file? Because actually, as it turns out, before I introduce you to any of these packages, I first want to introduce you to Composer's built-in auto-loading feature. So let's run composer init within our current project. Composer init. Okay, this command will guide you through creating your composer.json configuration. Now, in our case, I'm not building any specific package. So very quickly, I can enter my way uh, through most of these settings, as you see here. Next, do I want to define my dependencies interactively? No, I'll do it myself. Uh, same for development dependencies. All right, now check this out. Do we want to add PSR4 auto load mapping? Uh, I'm going to hit N to skip, but that actually is something uh, that we want to tackle. I just want to do it manually for you. All right, would you like the vendor directory added to your git ignore? So this means, uh, do we want this folder to be included ultimately when I push all of this code up to a production environment? And generally, 
No, you don't want to do that. So we can add the vendor folder to this .git ignore file. And that is a way to instruct Git to well, ignore this directory. That's exactly what it does. All right, so now if I switch over to PHP Storm, all right, and yeah, we can see two new files here, composer.json, that's our configuration file for Composer, and then also git ignore, which is unrelated to Composer entirely. It's related to, well, git. Any folder or file that we specify here will be ignored by git. And yeah, you can see it added slash vendor. So that means ignore your vendor directory. But I don't see a vendor folder. All right, well, that's the next step. We need to run composer install. So install our composer dependencies. But right now, if we have a look, well, I don't have any dependencies specified, but still let's go ahead and run it. All right, so have a look, where is it? Yeah, right here. Nothing to install, update or remove. And yeah, it makes sense. We didn't ask composer to install any package. So it didn't install any package. But then right down here at the bottom, generating autoload files. This is what I want to finish up with. So yeah, as it turns out, in addition to Composer being a great dependency manager, it also ships with a great autoloader. And as it turns out, that's what almost all of us use these days. And in fact, very rarely will developers define a configuration like this. Instead, we just use uh, what Composer ships with. All right, so how do we use it? Well, let's just try a couple things out. Uh, number one, here's uh, an experiment. Will it work automatically? Well, if I got rid of our autoload registration and I switch back to the browser, and no, it's not magic. It doesn't happen automatically. So we do get a fatal error. Class core container was not found. All right, so the next question, how do we make use of Composer's autoloader? Well, if I switch back, here is that new vendor directory. And again, that was created when we ran Composer install. And if I open it up, this will contain all of the packages that we ultimately pull in uh, with Composer. But right now we just have one folder for Composer itself. And if I open it, and by the way, you don't need to uh, pay much attention to any of these files. I'm just showing you to give you a quick bird's eye view of what's happening here. And yeah, you'll see a bunch of autoload specific files like uh, individual classes I want to autoload or namespaces or PSR4 based autoloading. So what is PSR4? It's just a specification for how we can go about autoloading files. That's it. It's just a spec. Um, for now, that's all you need to know about it. All right, so we are going to make use of that. So if I come back to composer.json, here's what we do. Here, I will add a new property called autoload, and this is where I can define and configure how I want autoloading for my application to behave. And yeah, I want to take advantage of PSR4. Okay, so let's see what we have right now for our namespaces. We have this core folder and an HTTP folder. Now, ultimately, I think I'd like to graduate to a top level app folder, but for now, we can keep them separate. So if I open up any of these classes that we've created, it looks like my top level namespace is core, and that namespace corresponds to this directory name. All right, let's try it out. I'm going to say the namespace core corresponds to the core directory name. Now, I will warn you, there's a small little mistake here that I introduced on purpose, and I did that because it's a near certainty that at least for one of your projects, you will make this mistake as well. And luckily, Composer can find this and notice it and then tell you how to fix it. All right, so uh, we'll get to that in a minute. So whenever you update your autoloading configuration, you will want to switch back to the terminal and run Composer dump autoload, and that'll repopulate those autoload files. But now we can see, yeah, right here, a non-empty PSR4 prefix must end with a namespace separator. A namespace separator is, well, let's go to any of these. Uh, well, do we have one? How about middleware? That's a namespace separator, just a slash. All right, so it's telling us right here, uh, a PSR4 prefix has to end with that backslash. All right, so we'll do it right here. 
But now PHP Storm is squawking again, and that's because, well, as it turns out, a backslash can be used for escaping purposes. So now it thinks I'm trying to escape that quote, and I'm not. So I actually need to use two backslashes. I'm going to escape the backslash. Yeah, a little confusing. You'll get used to it. All right, so let's run it again. Composer dump autoload. All right, and I think we're all set. Let's go and check just for fun. If I go back into that Composer folder and into autoload PSR4, it looks like the file was changed on disk. So let's reload it. And sure enough, we can see this mapping. And yeah, it's very simple. It's saying this namespace can be found at our base directory, which is just the root of the project, and then into the core folder. Okay, now we actually had two as we talked about. And again, eventually we will merge these, but for now uh, we'll, we'll double up. So let's add another top level namespace for HTTP. All right, back to Composer. Let's duplicate this and then swap it out. And yeah, notice I don't have to do it for every nested directory. I only have to declare the top level, the root uh, namespace. All right, so let's run it again. And now, again, just for fun and so that we grasp what's going on here, if I switch back and we give this a reload, yeah, now we have two mappings. Okay, so is that it? Is that all we have to do? Can I switch back to Firefox and cross my fingers and hit refresh? No, it still doesn't work. And that's because, well, yes, we have defined these mappings, but I still haven't required Composer's autoloader into my project. So that's the next step. Let's go into public index.php. I can now delete our old autoloader uh, function. And yeah, maybe right here, I can say require, and I wanna pull in vendor and then this file right here autoload.php. Okay, but I can't just do this. I can't say vendor autoload.php because remember, I'm currently in the public directory. So this would look for a vendor folder within public. And of course I can't do that. So I need to go up a level to the root and then to vendor. And yeah, it looks like many episodes ago, we defined a constant for that. So why don't we do that now? Base path and then concatenate vendor autoload.php. And yeah, I would even move this uh, as high up as we can go. So in fact, why don't we just do something like that? And yeah, this is very common, very typical for any modern PHP project or package. If you inspect their entry point, at the very top, you will see a require statement that pulls in Composer's autoload file. If you're using a framework like Laravel, have a look. One of the first things it does is pull in Composer's autoload file. All right, so let's come back and this time actually cross our fingers and now it works. Everything's working exactly the way it did before, but now we are leveraging and benefiting for free from Composer's built-in autoloader. All right, so now in the next episode, we will pull in our first package. Stay tuned.